Here is Ebenholtz. He is a boss killer. Supposedly, of course. I will never confirm or deny that boss killers exist in the game. Ebenholtz hits pretty hard, but he's also regarded as the worst 6-star caster in the game. I pulled for him, despite knowing this, because I'm a licensed sociopath. What makes him so bad? Well, let's figure that out. You want me to hire a composer to make a theme song for you? Oh, it's coming with the anime. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess I'll try contacting some artists and see what comes up. Ebenholtz is a mystic caster, which means he has an extremely long attack interval of 3 seconds, but a very high attack going up to 1.5 thousand at max level and trust. He can store charges of his attacks where there are no enemies in range, and all these charges are unleashed on his next attack. This mechanic makes mystic casters in general hard to use because you don't have much control over when they'll be expending these charges, which if you're not positioning the mystic caster correctly, will usually be some random dog or slug that they'll waste all their charges on. Small enemies are the bane of mystic caster's existence because the charge attacks are way overkill for the low HP, meaning you wasted damage and now your day sucks and you have no motivation to do anything, which reflects poorly on your resume and work ethic so you might as well drop out of school and become a full-time content creator. Ebenholtz has some conditions in his kit to avoid this wasted damage problem, which is great since you'll pretty much only want him to tackle big enemies anyways. His first talent, Dynamics, increases his damage on stored shots and lets him store an additional charge that can only be fired on elite or boss enemies. If you can't tell whether or not an enemy is a boss or an elite, they're basically signified by this triangle sign in the enemy archive. This talent ensures that Ebenholtz will save at least some of his damage for big enemies, but only if you let him store his charges to max. This elite only stock will always be the last to charge, so if Ebenholtz doesn't build up this charge and attack to pay on, then he'll have to start over to try building the stock again. Overall, the increased damage on stored charges increases his front loaded damage even more, and with the extra boss charge, you can tell which direction his kit is going in. Apogeatura, which is Ebenholtz's second talent, lets him deal more damage to the target if there are no nearby enemies in a 1.1 tile radius near his target. Both of these talents point Ebenholtz's kit into handling elite enemies and bosses, since they're usually isolated, letting him scale off his second talent. His whole kit synergizes with this role, cause you're gonna be placing him in a spot where there aren't many small enemies, and he'll get that spicy big red funny number along with the extra charge in. His first and second talent scale with each other multiplicatively, which is really good for his damage. Hey man, I know you have a lot of experience composing, and I noticed that your recent works were more modern genres compared to your previous pieces. Do you think you could make an opening song for an anime? You have some ideas already. Alright, I'll leave it to you then. Ebenholz's first skill changes his attack range to an Ifrit lane minus last tile, reducing his attack interval to half a second at M3, but also reducing the damage to only 50%. This skill is very short, only lasting 5 seconds, though it also has a short SP cost of only 15. Basically, use this skill if you want to get charges fast, since the attack interval reduction will make Ebenholz get all his stocks quickly. The linear range can actually be a good thing, since he won't waste his attacks on the adjacent enemies. You wouldn't really use it over his third skill in most cases since the attack reduction and short duration doesn't add more to his one-shot potential, but it's good for general usage. Ebenholtz's second skill uses all his stored charges to summon his gang on deployable tiles. The spooky dudes last 30 seconds and basically act as W mines exploding and dealing arts damage when enemies come near them. The explosion will also pull enemies toward the summon with medium force. You might think this skill is actually pretty decent because it's like WS2, but with a funky pull instead, which might have some fun usage, but no, it is complete doo-doo. Hot dog water. Utter garbage. You see, Ebenholz's summons only last 30 seconds, while W's mines last for 120, which is, you know, 4 times that duration. Ebenholz will need to consistently refill the ghost guys in his range, which means he can't stack attack charges. Also, the summon count is directly tied to the amount of stored charges he has, which means if Ebenholz tries slamming them all on an enemy before the skill, you'll only get one ghost man out of it. This problem of not having enough goals is made even worse with the stupid pull 
Full Force. Imagine this, an enemy trips and falls on their way to school and walks in the goal range where the first explosion deals just enough damage to not kill them, and they live with a sliver of health. But now they trigger all the other spook dudes with their negligible HP, and on top of that, they're in Ebenholz's range, so he spends all his charges on them, and bam, current goal gang is gone, and next goal gang is postponed until 2024. It doesn't even have to be the pull, Eben spawning multiple summons on top of a small enemy will trigger two or three of them, and that's plenty of wasted damage. The delay on the explosion also means that more summons can trigger even after one of the goals decides to commit seppuku. What's disappointing is that the damage is actually pretty good, but there's so many ways for the summons to get wasted instead of exploding at the right time. The skill is only good if you're able to let him snowball with it, but at that point, you might as well just use a different operator. Ebenholz's third skill is basically a better version of his skill 1. It increases his attack speed and attack, but only makes him able to target elite or boss enemies. It also buffs the talent 1 charge damage multiplier to 1.89 times instead of 1.35. You don't have to be a genius to see how to use this skill, you press a button and bam, fat damage against elites or bosses if you let them hit with max stored charges, which isn't enough to kill most bosses, but it's sizable enough to make anything way less menacing. The single attacks after the burst are also pretty good. Because the skill has low downtime of 20 SP and can manually be deactivated, you can also use it like his skill 1 where you press the button to get the attack speed buff so Eben can gain charges faster and then deactivate once he's at full HP to help cycle it again. You can do the funny skill attack cancel with him, just like with most other operators with projectiles, to get the big damage on non-elites. His X module gives him more stored charge damage as the talent upgrades, and an extra charge for the trade upgrade, which is pretty good. S3's first hit is even bigger now. Damage good. Ooh yeah. Ebenholz's Y mod gives him attack speed when he's holding charges, and basically turns him into a pseudo AoE caster if he's attacking non-isolated enemies. The difference between these two mods is not that Y mod is for S2 and X mod is for S3, Y mod is if you're trying to magically turn your Ebenholz into a more well-rounded operator by giving him wave clear options against trash mobs. It actually pairs really well with S1 because of S1's reduced damage, so Ebenholz can spam AoE procs and kill everyone to Together. What a heartwarming guy. Basically, mod X for S3, mod Y for trying to actually use Ebenholtz, which I assume is going to be none of you. Now, why does Ebenholtz suck? He's pretty good at handling elites, so he should be really good, right? And then you realize that outside of handling elites, he's meh. And even in his niche of big damage on menacing enemy, there's infinitely better options like Shelter, Surter, Neural Awesome, and so on. Shelter can clean up trash easy with her expanded waterboard range, but Ebenholz's attack interval is too slow to handle regular waves of mobs. His skills can't do a mix of cleaning trash and dealing big damage. S1 is the only thing close to this, but you lose a lot of damage during the uptime. S2 straight up just sucks, and S3 forces him to not attack trash, so during downtime you can't rely on him for wave clearing. Ebenholtz has massive front loaded damage, but other than that, he's not really special. General content was not made for this man, but that's okay. I'm just gonna use him as a second Chen Awesome by buffing the hell out of his S3 and watching him do one-shot pop shots on every boss, which helps me speed from stages. He also has awesome classical music references and a really cool E2 art, so that's nice. Anyways, thanks to Locust for helping me write the script for this video. He is God's strongest Ebenholtz simp, and he gave me some key details about Ebenholtz that I wouldn't have known without the billion hours he put into the operator. Alright, that's it. Goodbye. Amya, this theme is an absolute banger. Trust me on this. Hit it, Ebenholtz. I was joking, please don't hurt me.